Hello friends, welcome to another video, welcome back, this is the OpenVR TV. If it is your first time, take a moment and hit that subscribe button below. And if you're a, new, if you're a returning subscriber, thank you for watching the video. Today we're going to talk about, of course, as you can see, the short door doctrine. So, let's see if it is from the Bible or is it from Ellen White. Chapter 6 of Genesis and chapter 7. Chapter 6, God told Noah, I'm going to destroy the whole world. Chapter 7, chapter, and chapter 6, God told Noah, build an ark, make this, build this, and do this. Chapter 7, we're going to start. Verse number 13. In the self same day entered Noah and Shem and Ham and to the ark, okay? They and every beast after its kind, and all the cattle after their kind, and every creeping thing after its kind. And what happened after that? Bible says, and the Lord what? The Lord shut him in. The Lord shut him in. So, did God shut Noah into the ark? Yes. Noah didn't close the door. God did. So, as Noah, as God shot Noah inside of the ark, those that were marking Noah, they were shot out of the ark, while Noah was shot in. So guys, why how long? Because Noah was preaching to them 120 years. Bible says that God said men will have 120 years. Well, we know Noah was a preacher of righteousness, According to Second Peter chapter two, Noah, Bible says, was what? And spared not the old world, but saved Noah, the what? The eighth person, a preacher of righteousness. So Noah was preaching, whether it was verbally or through his life, while while he was building the ark. Make sense? So yes, Noah actually was shut in while the rest of the world was shut out. God shut the door on the wicked. In your Bible, Second Samuel chapter two verse fifteen. A study to show that the people of God, a workman that needs not to be ashamed, rightly divine the word of truth. Let's keep on moving. How about the second? Let's let's look at the second instance where God shut the door. I'm not gonna go there, but you remember in Genesis chapter eighteen when God shut the door on the on Sodom and Gomorrah and only saved Lot and his daughter. Even the even though the wife left the city, she was shut out because she turned around and looked back at the city and God shut the door on her as well. <laughs> we you see when you have spiritual eyesight, it's not that it has to say shut door or God shut the door on them every single time. But there is a permission time. And if you guys read the story of Sodom and Gomorrah in the Bible, you're going to find out Abraham was pleading for Gomorrah and Sodom. And God said, if there are 50, I'm not going to destroy them. If there are 40, 30, 10, they weren't even five. So when God told Lord to leave because the time to destroy Sodom is near, God shut the door on them because they would have repent. If Lord didn't leave, he would have shut the door on himself because the door was still open for him to get out. But the rest of them, they would not leave because they were deep into their wickedness. But let's move on. How about Exodus chapter 10? Pharaoh. Remember Pharaoh? Oh man. Remember Pharaoh? Yes. Pharaoh had the door shut upon himself. And God said to Moses, verse number 10, verse number 9, And thus said unto Moses, Pharaoh shall not hearken unto you, that my wonders may be multiplied in the land of Egypt. Pharaoh did not want to listen. And God said, Oh, you don't want to listen? I'm going to shut the door on you. I'm going to bring a destruction that will make you regret not walking through that door at first. Because what was the door? The door was to let my people go. If I was said, you know what, fine. They can leave. 
he would have God would have spared him all that trouble. But because Pharaoh shut the door of his heart on God, then God shut the door of salvation on Pharaoh. In the wilderness, the Israelites, Numbers chapter 14, when God brought them to the mouth of Canaan, what did they do? They rebelled against God and said, we cannot go through. And when Joshua and Caleb said, yes, we can go through, we can beat them, what happened? The people wanted to kill Joshua and Caleb. And God said, oh, all this time you've been testing me ten times. This time, you done messed up. I'm going to shut the door on you. You will not enter Canaan. And you will perish in the wilderness. Numbers chapter 14. Read that chapter. <laughs> so, is the shut door doctrine from Elamite or from the Bible? There is more. I'm not going to make the video too long. We can talk about 1 Kings 18, Elijah and the prophet of Bernard Grove. We can talk about 2 Kings chapter 9, about Jezebel. She had ample opportunity to, to renounce her satanic witchcraft ways and cling to God, but she didn't want to what happened. And God shut the door on her. But let me actually go to something even more potent. Let's go to Jeremiah. Yes, Jeremiah. Jeremiah chapter 25. Do you guys remember all the time when God was telling the Israelites, if you keep breaking my commandments, you will be captives in foreign lands. <laughs> oh, man. And they would not listen. God sent them messengers after messengers, prophets after prophets, and they killed them all. And God says, you know what? I'm done. I'm going to shut the door on you. You will no longer possess the land. The door to be, the, that shut door for the Israelites was possessing the land. If you do not, if you call into my principle, I'm going to shut the door on you, meaning I'm going to depossess the land from you. And you will go to captivity. What happened? In chapter 25 of Jeremiah, the 70 years captivity, they went into captivity. Did God shut the door on the Jewish nation at that time? Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. You know what? You know what else? There's another one actually. Is there, is there not a better one actually? Do you guys remember in the book of Daniel? Chapter 9. <laughs> you see, I'm just showing you guys, I'm just showing you guys the, the short door doctrine. That it is from the Bible. Yes, the words might not be there. But if you study, you're like, wait a minute, there is a probation time. There is a probation, that's why we, that's why we, that's why we call it the, the door of probation. Chapter 9, listen to this. Verse number 24. Seventy weeks are determined upon thy people and upon thy holy city to finish the transgression and to make an end of sin and to make reconciliation for iniquity and to bring in everlasting righteousness and to seal up the vision and prophecy and to know the most holy. Verse 25. Know therefore and understand that from the going forth of the, com of the commandment to restore and to build Jerusalem unto the Messiah, the prince shall be seven weeks. And three score and two weeks, the streets shall be built again, and the wall, and it's even in troublous time. After three score and two weeks, shall Messiah be cut off, and not for him, but not for himself. And the people of the prince shall come, that shall come, shall destroy the city and the sanctuary. And at the end of thereof, shall be a flood with a flood, and until the end of the war, the solution are determined. The Israelites had seventy weeks, prophetic weeks, or 490 years. Bible says what? 
to make an end of sin, to finish transgression and make an end of sin and make reconciliation for iniquity and to bring in everlasting righteousness and to seal up the vision of the prophecy. Did they have a probation time? Yes. Did they have a probation time? Yes. And we know that they f that God shut the door. You know how we know that? Let me show you how we know that. In the book of Acts, in the book of Acts, in the book of Acts, chapter 7, when Stephen gave that speech, I want you guys to read it for yourself. I'm going to go down to verse number 54. The, the vision, the prophecy started, it started in autumn 454 BC at the command of, I think his name is Octaxerxes Longaminus, when he made the, the final command for, for the Jewish nation to rebuild Jerusalem and the street and everything else. Fast forward 490 years would have been um, 80, 30. Three, but since we don't have U zero, it ended in AD thirty four. In four in AD thirty four, fall of AD thirty four. Because remember, Jesus died in AD thirty one spring. That was in the middle of that last week or that last seven year. From AD twenty seven fall to AD thirty four fall. That's seven years. And Jesus died in the middle, AD thirty one spring which means three and a half years later that brings us to Stephen stoning the stoning of Stephen after Stephen gave that whole speech it what happened when they heard these things they were cut to the heart and they gnashed on him with their teeth but he being full of the Holy Ghost looked up steadfastly into the heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing on the right hand of God and said, Behold, I see the heavens open and the Son of Man standing on the right hand of God. Then they cried out with a loud voice and stopped their what? Ears. They stopped their ears. They did not want to listen. Because they stopped their ears, and they did not want to listen, and they ran unto him and cast one word, and they cast him out of the city and stoned him. What happened? God shut the door on the Jewish nation, and the message was no longer given to the Jewish nation, but to the Gentiles. And you want to tell me the shut door doctrine is not biblical? Please. And Saul was there when they killed Stephen. <laughs> I want you guys to read, there's a book from Ellen White called Acts of Apostle. I that's the next book I'm going to be reading. I want you guys to read it too. To all the naysayers out there. Read that book. Now, how about the end of the world? <laughs> how about the end of the world? Is there a time when probation closes for those that are living up right now? Yes. Yes. Um, if you read in Matthew chapter 24, Matthew chapter 24, Jesus was talking about the, um, the end of the destruction of Jerusalem. Did you know that Ellen White said, there was no Christian that was dead when when sisters came to this no when Titus came to destroy the city in AD seventy. There were no Christians that were left because they had all left when sisters came the first time in AD sixty six, or and then they left. The Christian who listened to the voice of Jesus said, "Wait a minute, this is the sign for us to leave," and when they left. All the Jewish so-called rabbis who didn't want to listen to the voice of Jesus Christ, the door was shut on them. And when Titus came in 70 AD, he destroyed the whole city. And there was so much blood. Like we read in, 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 the, in chapter 9 of Daniel, there was so much blood. So, is there a time for us now 
to listen to the voice and not be shot out of the door from the door yes you can be shot in but if God shut the door on you and you're on the outside or you're, and you're on the outside of the door you're on the wrong side of the door you better let God shut you in within the door than without the door and what that means is you need to listen to the voice of God And yes, the door of permission is closing on us right now, on you and I. We have to make a choice. That's why. And actually, let me show you how I know that the door of permission is closing on us. Because Jesus said himself in chapter 22 of Revelation. And let, I'm going to skip on down. And he said unto me, verse number 20, he said unto me, Seal not the saints of the prophets of this book, for the time is at hand. And he that is unjust, let him be unjust still. He and he which is filthy, let him be filthy still. And he that is righteous, let him be righteous still. And he that is holy, let him be holy still. And behold, I come quickly. And what? And my reward is with me, to give every man according as his work shall be. My friend, let me tell you something. When Jesus Christ says those words, He that is unjust, let him be unjust still. He that is filthy, let him be filthy still. He that is righteous, let him be righteous still. And he that is holy, let him be holy still. The door of probation is closed. There is no going back. That was the same word pronounced on the antediluvians. That was the same words pronounced on Solomon Gomorrah. That was the same words pronounced at the time of, Je of the destruction of Jerusalem. That was the same words uh, on on the on the close of probation for the Jewish nation to bring the message. God will say it again, He that is holy, let him be holy still. Because once you are holy in God's eyes, at the point where there is no going back, there is no going back. The door is forever closed. You're going to be either for God or against God. I'm going to stop it right here. Guys, don't forget again to hit that subscribe button on your way out. If you like the video, hit that like button. Please, I want to read your comment. I actually read your comment last time too. Um, but I want you guys to understand that short the doctrine is not from Ellen White. Okay? Somebody else could have come up with the name. But it is from the Bible. And it is true. And I want you also to know that the door is closing. Or you're going to be in. Or you're going to be out. Again, it was the Bible TV. Hope to see you guys again. Until then, bye for now.